So in this video, we're going to look at the differences between applying retention policies to sites and using retention labels to apply policies to individual documents. So they work slightly differently and they can work both in Microsoft Teams and SharePoint. So um, we'll take you through the process of where you can find those as well. But I just want to start off by showing you the differences in experience. So if we go to our SharePoint library here in the background, we've got a document stored inside our general channel. It's called important documents. Now I've applied a site policy to this to retain documents uh, for seven years. So our finance documents, we need to keep them for seven years. So we've applied a site-wide retention policy. Now if I try and delete this document, you'll see that it does actually delete. It disappears, it's gone. However, if I go to the site contents, you'll see that there's a library in here called the Preservation Hold Library. And if I go into that library, you'll see that the document that I deleted is available there. And if I need to, I can access that document, that version of it. Now, labels work slightly differently. So I can, I can apply the same retention policies, but as a label to individual documents. So one of the downsides to this is your end user has to select a retention label unless you set up a default one on a particular library. So if I was to select this document, I could apply a retention policy um, using a label. So again, if I scroll down on here on the information panel, I can see all the available retention policies. This is a, a finance document label, which retains them for seven years. And if I select that on this on this individual document as an end user, and then I try to delete it, you'll see it's a it's a different experience. The label doesn't let me delete the item from that library, and it keeps it within the library. So although they're both retention policies, one's a site policy and one's an individual document label, they both work in a slightly different way. Looking at the admin center, there was two different ways to set up the different types of labels and policies. So in the uh, admin center, I can go to the compliance admin center. And there's lots of things you can do in here in terms of document management. We are just focusing on the retention policies. So I'm going to go to information governance and retention. So I basically, when I created the site retention policy, I just clicked create and I followed the steps. So I give it a name, finance policy. I could choose whether I wanted to retain the, the documents or whether I wanted to delete them when they get to a certain age. So deleting documents is just as important and might be more important, especially if that's sensitive data that you shouldn't keep for too long. And when I retained it, I decided to keep it for seven years after the date it was created, but I could change that to last modified as well. And I could even force it to be deleted after so long, so you're not keeping data that's out of date. So I then go to next, and you can see that you can apply these policies not just to SharePoint, but to lots of areas in Office 365. Now, because I only wanted it to apply to one SharePoint site, which was also a team, I deselected all the rest, I went to choose sites, and I added uh, the finance sites that I wanted to apply it to. So I just grabbed the URL of that site, pasted it in there, selected it, chose it, then reviewed it, and then created the policy. And then uh, that applied it to that entire site, and it gave me that experience that we first looked at. Now for the labels, I can create policy labels, which I can then publish to sites. And I could publish different labels to different sites. Again, one of the downsides to doing this is your end users have to tag uh, those documents with a particular retention label, and um, which makes it a bit more um, less user friendly. So I can go into my label policies. And again, I've got my different labels here. 
So I'll just show a quick example of that. Publish labels. Choose the labels that I've already created. So I can add one if they don't already exist. So I've got one here, my financial documents. Go to next and I can publish it to specific locations. And again, I can choose that one SharePoint site that I want to make that set of labels available. So again, it's just a case of copying that URL, choosing those sites and pasting them in. Then go to next, give the policy a friendly name, uh, finance labels, and then publish the, the labels. And then that makes them available on the site. Again, you might have to wait at least a day for those labels to appear. And then they become available in the drop down when you select a document. So I hope you found that useful. There's lots, again, like I said, there's lots of other things you can do in terms of sensitivity labels and um, other data management policies that you can apply in Office 365. But that should give you an idea of two of the main ways of setting uh, retention policies uh, to documents and sites.